I think it's been too little noted how remarkable a move it was to create queer t-shirts and other forms of activist regalia. After all, this is a community that was defined by the inability um, socially and culturally to speak its name. And it went from that kind of performative silence to the literal wearing of that name across one's chest. The history of that development is one of the most telling signs of the modern queer movement. And what's most remarkable about it is how recent it is. We um, are so used to seeing t-shirts with slogans that now we think they've always been that way. But in my research, I've been hard pressed to find one that antedates the early 1980s. Um, there is a, a t-shirt that was made by uh, the artist Joey Terrell in Los Angeles uh, reading Mariposa, um, but that, and that was in 1977, but that was hand painted. And there were a lot of hand painted t-shirts, people individually expressing themselves. But to have actually a t-shirt that was produced as a commercial enterprise available to people really was attended only upon the birth of the National Marches on Washington and um, the initial protests around the Bowers v. Hardwick decision at the Supreme Court. That's when we start to see the advent of queer activist fashion as a viable commercial enterprise. Of course, I'm in some sense instantiating something of a false distinction when I talk about queer activist fashion in the first place, because all fashion is intended to communicate an identity, to perform a self that seems real to the, the bearer. And so, for example, with the 1970s, you had the clone look, which was tight t-shirts, very, very um, uh, trim, tight, 501 jeans, um, uh, often sanded so that aspects of one's secondary sexual characteristics came to the fore. Or similarly, uh, in the 1970s, you had uh, lesbian feminists wearing uh, flannel t-shirts intended to communicate they were not interested in performing a, a, a sort of traditional female role. So in that sense, right, queer activist fashion has always been there. It's just that what I'm talking about is that new form in which a word actually claimed to represent an identity. One of the most um, striking aspects of the queer t-shirt is how sensitive an index it is of minute changes in LGBTQ self-identification. Because of course, to use a word means that that word has to correlate in a profound way with one's identity. And we can trace a remarkable series of words over only the last 25 years that have been used over, on t-shirts over chests from lesbian and gay and trans and bi to queer. And then of course now with new forms um, of self-identification. And what's striking about these changes is that unlike a t-shirt that simply has an image on it, a word has to have some sort of claim to representing accurately a community. And so there's a lot of pressure on that word to bespeak exactly what one understands oneself to be. With the advent of uh, queer t-shirts, we've seen those words get ever more um, self-selecting, uh, ever more specific.